Uh 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 uh. Don't turn that dial. This is the right station. If you want to hear about Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the Moon. Jonathan Thomas, who has just turned six, got himself in a terrible fix. He went to bed at half past eight, which isn't early, nor is it late. And he went to sleep with his teddy bear, Guz. He never could sleep without Guz, because... Well, then when the chime on the clock struck nine, and when it would seem he had begun to dream, a beam from the moon came into his room, and two funny people named Ezra and Jeepel slid down and started to frown at Jonathan Thomas and Guz. Well, then Guz woke up and chased them up, as any teddy bear should do. And then Jonathan Thomas, he woke up too, because he heard the fuzz that was made by Guz. And he joined the chase to the funniest place since the world began. And pretty soon he met a man who turned out to be, as he could plainly see, the man in the moon. Then pretty soon, when he was in his room, there was the awfulest noise, even worse than boys can make with their toys. And he got more scared than he dared or cared to let on, because Guz was gone. And he sighed and nearly cried, and if he had, it wouldn't have been bad. And do you know because? The Squibblums had kidnapped Santa Claus. Mr. Mr. Man in the Moon. Oh, for goodness sakes, stop calling me Mr. Man in the Moon. Oh, but I thought that was your name. Oh, how very silly. If it's your name, how could it be mine? But it isn't. Because my name is Jonathan Thomas. That's a fibber, because my name isn't Jonathan Thomas. My name's nothing of the sort. And I'll be pleased if you'll call me that from now on. Yes, sir. Thank you, please, Mr. Nothing of the Sort. But could maybe I ask you a question? I don't know. (laughs) Have you ever tried it? Please, Mr. Nothing of the Sort. Why do we have to come here to old King Cole's court? My goodness gracious, what an easy question. (laughs) We come here to King Cole's court because we don't have to go there. And anybody knows that King Cole's court isn't there. It's here. There is where the old folks stay. Oh. Oh, what? Just, oh? Oh, because I wish we could go look for Gus. Well, I guess there's nothing to stop us. We can look for him or five him or even six him. Well, if we have enough time. And if we haven't, maybe we can borrow some from anybody. He's got lots of time on his hands. Ooh, what's that? Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This is the court of the very best sort, for it's the court of old King Cole. Let the good be good and stand as they should, and the bad make confession, for this court is now in session. (laughs) His Majesty King Cole. (laughs) Oh dear. Uh, um, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else, uh, this is the most serious moment of history. <laughs> and anybody who ever studied history knows how serious that is. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean to say, you all know that Santa Claus has been kidnapped. <laughs> and if he isn't rescued, there won't be any Christmas this year. And you know what that means. It means that no toys for the boys, no curls for the girls, and Christmas will be very sad. That day of the year will be without cheer, no presents or candy or things. No come, all ye faithful, no carol that sings. And the day will be bad, not merry or glad, and no presents that send to Claus the <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Now then, I am certain that there is a traitor in our midst. There is someone in this city of, oh my goodness, who is a spy for the terrible Squibblums who kidnapped our dear Mr. Claus. Therefore, we are now going to hold court to find the guilty culprit. And I do hereby and herewith elect Professor I. M. Looney to act as prosecuting attorney and the tired lion, Mr. Loudly O'Rourke, to act as the defense attorney. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Your Majesty, and ladies and gentlemen. And now, first of all, 
We shall proceed. Will the clerk of the court please ask Mr. Humpty Dumpty to come forth? <laughs> I think you'd better have him come first instead of fourth, Mr. Looney, <laughs> so we can keep the numbers straight. Yes, very well, Your Majesty. Will the clerk of the court please call Mr. Humpty Dumpty to the stand? Humpty Dumpty to the stand! Yeah, 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 here I am. Uh, uh, Sit down. Uh, uh, God. Now then, Mr. Clerk of the Court, swear the witness. Uh, no, 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 listen, Your Majesty. If you brung me up here just to swear at me, I ain't a going to stay. I don't like being swore at. I said swear the witness, Mr. Humpty Dumpty, not swear at the witness. The word at being a preposition to show the relationship between the object and the verb. And one should never, never end a sentence with a preposition. <laughs> yeah, what about a jail sentence, Professor Looney? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> if you please, if you please, Your Majesty. <laughs> now then, Mr. Humpty Dumpty, where were you on the evening of the second Tuesday of last week? Uh, mm, no place. Aha, but can you prove it? Uh, nope. But I sure can recite verses. Oh, no, 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 don't dare, don't dare, I warn you. I'll, I'll go to pieces, I'll go to pieces. In the uh, middle of the night when the sun was shining bright and the stars merrily twinkling, oh. no sound was around and the still was so shrill that nobody could hear oh, the I, listening. I, I, I'm going to pieces. I'm going to pieces. Oh, 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 no. Well, I'm most sorry to regret that due to the fact that Professor Looney has just <laughs> gone to pieces, a court is now adjourned until we put him back together. <laughs> Time has come for everyone to take their seats again. And if you fail, you'll go to jail, which is commonly called the pen. Sit down. <laughs> uh, call the next witness. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, Jonathan Thomas to the stand. Jonathan Thomas to the stand. Where is Jonathan Thomas? If you please, sir, I'm right here. Huh. That's what you say. But I say that you're wrong here. And to proof of the pudding is in the eating. Oh, goody. <laughs> Plum pudding, eh? <laughs> With mint sauce, Professor Looney. <laughs> if, 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 if you please, Your Majesty. Uh, uh, <clears throat> proceed. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, now then, Jonathan Thomas, uh, do you solemnly swear that you will uh, bill-fill the sack doodle of the bill-wig stratelhasniks of the true brassy of the crally leadenshus of the Neliopas cough? So help me, Hannah, say I do. I do. What if you please? Ah, you see, Your Majesty, a fading. And all the one needs is but one look at this cringing crook of crying crime, criminally conspiring, scamp of cut wolling in his cataclysmic catastrophes, coarse grass, and unchristian company would claim and consider him considerably crazy, a complete confession of contemptible contemptuousness of contempt of court. Unquote. Now, answer my question, can you? Or can't you, 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 you? Can I? What? If you please? Aha! Evading again. <laughs> now, if you please, Your Majesty, you'll notice that he is about to cry. <laughs> Trying to soothe our sympathy with silly sobs of sappy suffering. So strife will cease and success seem to strike sorrow subservient. But I say, Your Majesty, he is guilty. Hey, hey, hey. Quiet, 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 quiet. <laughs> so it seems there's something in what you say. <laughs> Proceed. Proceed, I will. I accuse this prisoner of the bar of being a spy for the terrible Squeebublums. For Santa Claus was not kidnapped until after Jonathan Thomas, alias Johnny the Jip, alias Jonah the Jinx, arrived in our... Fair, fair city of, oh, my goodness, which proved it. Your Majesty, I accuse Jonathan Thomas of being responsible for Santa Claus being kidnapped. And I recommend that he be spanked by the royal spankers and also be given two bottles of castor oil. But I do like castor oil. Oh, neither do I. <laughs> Your Majesty, 
I rest my jolly old case. Oh, well, uh, thanks, Looney, <laughs> old fellow. <laughs> <clears throat> now, Jonathan Thomas. Since you were accused of being a spy for the Squibblums, you must be one. And therefore, it is the sentence of this court that you go to the land of Squibble and bring back Santa Claus. And if you fail, well, I don't like castor oil either. <laughs> <laughs> Well, poor Jonathan Thomas. And what will happen to him in the land of the terrible Squibobbles? Well, you'll certainly find out in the next chapter of the story of Jonathan Thomas and his Christmas on the Moon. Mm-hmm.